At the FDC Delegates Conference held on Friday last week in Nambole Stadium near Kampala, members voted former Kumi MP Patrick Oboy Amuriet as the new party president, replacing retired Major General Gregory Mogisha Muntu. Amuriat defeated General Muntu by about 180 votes. The other contenders, Moses Biamogisha, walked away with a paltry three, while Dan Malcolm Masco managed just two votes. Many have argued that Amoriat, a close ally of founding FDC party president Dr. Kiza Besige, rode on the popularity of the leading opposition figure to sail to victory. Political analyst and Macquarie University lecturer of political history, Mambuti Andevesa, argues that the majority of FDC members took a gamble by electing Amoriat, while others felt Amoriat's election would diversify the party. So I think it was a gamble. It may pay. It, it may not pay, but certainly doing the same things over and over again and expect different results would be insanity, as some people have said. According to research and analyst Godba Tumushave, what FDC did was good for Uganda's democratic development. He adds, however, that if FDC is to take state power, the party will have to work harder to challenge NRM, which is not a political party in the real sense of the word, but a party fused with the state. When NRM is organizing its things, it's the district police commanders and the resident district commissioners and the district intelligence officers. They are the ones who are mobilizing and organizing for this group of people called NRM. I, I prefer calling NRM a cult. Tumushabe also urges that there is no big contradiction between Muntu's style of politics and that employed by Bess and his followers like Amuriat. Uh, I think that if you are managing a political party, the, the building party structures is indispensable. Even if you opted what people call the defiance campaign as a different brand, you still need those structures to manage a successful defiance campaign. On the other hand, Debesa feels that in the latest contest, General Muntu Namuriat had distinct support bases with Muntu appealing to the FDC elite, while Amuriat had the popular support. What is the way forward to me is not whether one candidate won or the other, but there should be a way of damage control. And possibly they should work out a formula uh, where Mujisha Muntu is given a post like the chairmanship of the party so that he remains relevant and he remains a leader of the party. The analysts agree, though, that Muntu and Amuri had faced tough times ahead. They will have to prove themselves in keeping FDC as a cohesive party in the midst of sharp differences in political approach. The two represent two tendencies in FDC, Amuri had for the extremists and Muntu for the moderates. Uh, you, you contested as an incumbent, you lost. Uh, part of the reason you lost, you think that the members of this party, a majority of them don't trust you. So do you actually remain part of this organization? That's a really tough choice for him. Amuriat's challenge is to demonstrate that he's not a puppet of Chisa BSJ, that he's a leader in his own right. On the night Amuriat's victory was announced, some of the Muntu loyalists like Soroti woman MP Angelino Sege expressed their disappointment with the outcome with muted anger. Now, if the rest of us cannot work with a certain way of doing things, then it means maybe we think of something else. The spotlight is now on the new party leadership under Muria to see whether they will hold FDC together to avoid disintegration like what nearly happened after the 2012 election when General Muntu defeated Nandela Mafabi, who is now the FDC Secretary General. Suhail Mugabe, NTV.